So I'm going to give you a rundown of most of the historic equipment that I've taken on my surviving the Great Barrier Reef expedition. I'll just go through the things one by one. In fact, starting with this hat, <laughs> this is the kind of hat they used to wear back in the day. Very inappropriate for the sun up here. I need to make my own straw hat quick smart. I've got uh, clothes, that the kind of clothes I used to wear back in the day, which my mum sewed up for me. Thanks, mum. And uh, I've actually got slightly different pants, which mum sewed up as well, but I've just got these ones on at the moment. So clothing wise there was seven people that made it ashore plus the remnants of clothing from the other 14 people that died in the raft. So the captain did die, that's a captain's jacket which I've something similar to a captain's jacket. Uh, wool jumper, you know cotton, natural fibre, that kind of stuff is the kind of thing they used to have back in the day. That's a possum skin beanie there and a scarf and this is an entire possum skin rug which I've sewn out of New Zealand possum skin because you can't hunt possums in Australia and I've turned that into a sleeping bag and beneath that I've got a wool blanket which he also talked about having in his book and I've sewed that into a sleeping bag as well. Uh, this is a sextant, uh, a genuine 19th century sextant which uh, wasn't working when I bought it second hand. Uh, a couple of things were wrong with it. The focal length was incorrect, so I ended up improvising an extension to the focal length with a piece of bamboo. It now works well. Uh, I had to clean off the, uh, the basically the measurement where the units are drawn there. And uh, also the mirror, the sextant mirror was um, all degraded. So I made an emergency fix for that by using beeswax and charcoal. And uh, that is an emergency method for fishing set for fixing sextants and I've got down to a mile of accuracy with it so I'm pretty happy with that. So these are some goggles which I've made myself using natural materials. That, that is sextant glass. Um, the mirror glass that goes here on the sextant, um, the spare glass for that has basically formed the lenses. Uh, that's bamboo which I've shaped with pocket knife and that is native beeswax which I've shaped to seal around my face. I haven't been able to test it yet. I was down south in winter and I'm looking forward to testing those out because that'll allow me to get under water. There's some native beeswax that doesn't enjoy being in the sun and it also needs to dry out a little bit. I'm looking forward to getting in the water and trying to get some lobsters with that. There is a uh, sharpening stone. That's canvas which I've just um, used the heated axe head to melt into the canvas. It's a great way to waterproof stuff. The hand lines, wooden. I am using monofilament line. He wouldn't have had monofilament. Uh, so I'm cheating a bit there, but he was fishing at a time when there was a hell of a lot more fish in the ocean and no sanctuary zones. So, and it's also pretty hard to find uh, line like that they used to have back in the day. That's a spoon lure, which I made myself, believe it or not, out of a vintage spoon. And uh, it seems to have pretty good action. That's a, that's a popper. And uh, it basically just, pops along the surface and I've just asked the kids to collect feathers over the last few months and I've just tied feathers onto various things. That's my tackle box full of um, homemade poppers and spoon lures and uh, just hooks and sinkers and stuff. Uh, there's my warmer sitting over there. Uh, this actually has um, dried kangaroo meat in it. I'll pull some out. So this is the kangaroo meat which I dried over the fire and I just had um, basically sea salt on it and it tastes pretty good. So I've dried um, I've got a few kilos of dry kangaroo meat, which is going to be one of my staples, actually. Uh, and that's the kind of thing he easily could have made. He's, he talked about drying shark and other stuff as well. Yeah, Alright, that's just a brush. Things are sandy here. And I call this my feed box, even though it doesn't have a lot of food in it. There's a, there's a mug, um, which I can also boil stuff in. Hemp sail thread. Uh, this is um, native ginger, which has been dried and also there's some salt on the bottom of that, just sea salt. Just olden day utensils and some tools. I'll have all the same tools that I built the raft from as well, just like the ax and the adz and stuff like that. <coughs> um, there's some native honey in that one. I was pretty hasty when I packed up, so it was a bit wet, so there's a bit of mold growing in there. That's a good start, isn't it? Um, same with that one, that's just a spare. It's getting a little bit moldy on the middle there. And here's some more native uh, honey in this one. This one here, uh, that's a camera cleaning kit there. That there is um, uh, coconut oil, which um, I can extract from coconuts, uh, which he could have done as well, and that's going to be fat supply. And this is more um, dried ginger, which I collected up on the way up and dried in the back of the car. It's still some of it's still drying over there. Um, this has got coconut flour, which is basically just rasp coconut into flour. These are some sunglasses, which sunglasses were invented back then 
and uh, there's a good chance he didn't have sunglasses but to look after my eyes up here um, I'm just basically giving myself some lenses and I've just improvised the, um, the case for them probably look like George Michael not great but it's really just a way to protect my eyes I really need to make something around here to stop the UV light getting in around the side because there's a lot of reflected light up here on the reef there's a chopping board for the fish that I hopefully catch of course there's my 20 litre water barrel which my shipwreck survivor talked about having a small barrel that's my primary water container. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention the telescope. Uh, good for seeing long distances, but uh, he talked about pulling the lens out of it, um, as using it as a magnifying glass and lighting uh, fires that way. And that's what I'm planning to do with it as well. And uh, as I was walking through the bush, uh, I found um, K-pop fluff, which is fantastic for um, lighting with it. Uh, I've also got kangaroo poo, or um, wallaby poo. Um, which when you dry off is also a great way to um, start fire, it's great kindling. Um, there's some pumice which I can use as a float for the sea anchors. Uh, I won't use this plastic bucket, that's just something in the back of the car. So I've been driving around the bush here just collecting stuff. Now, this is a um, baling bucket, metal, and uh, that's what I'm going to use, well not only for baling but also for an oven. Uh, I just actually googled using galvanized iron for cooking and it's bad because it's got zinc. I did um, put it in the fire to try and burn off any poison, but I don't think I made the fire hot enough. So I'm gonna really burn that thing in the first campfire I can make uh, just to get rid of the, the zinc poison out of it. Um, I'm taking wood because I'll be camping uh, a lot of the time while anchoring behind National Park Islands and you're not allowed to collect wood from the national parks. That's why I'm taking some wood to start off with. And then I'll just replenish it from the mainland when I'm not in a national park. Yeah, so that's um, my historic stuff. There's a little bit of extra stuff probably floating around which I haven't um, managed to get out on here, but that's the bulk of it. So um, yeah, please subscribe if you want to see um, more videos. So the next one I'm going to do is the modern equipment that I'm taking with me, the survival stuff, um, my camera stuff, my drones, and that kind of thing. Uh, and please subscribe to see more videos of my surviving the Great Barrier Reef expedition because it's, uh, it's going to be epic. So thanks for watching.